Today's video is sponsored by a good friend of the channel, Bootleg Greedo. Skrell versus Narika Yamazaki. And yeah, we've got a decent amount of mana there. I like the prosthetic injector as well, so... Definitely going to try this one. We are on the draw. See a land tax from our opponent. We draw into an ancient tomb, so it is the plains. Go for our commander on turn one, as we typically will. And then thanks to the Mox Amber, we can get down the crawling chorus here as well. Now we see a weathered wayfarer from our opponent. Uh, there is an Avon Sunstriker. Um, yeah, it would be good to get Avon Sunstriker into play thanks to the double strike. So let's go Ancient Tomb. And we can play Avon Sunstriker just as a flying double striker. Prosthetic Injector as well will not be equipped, unfortunately. That is plus two to toughness and toxic one. And then thankfully Skrelv has Phyrexian White for its ability, which makes all the difference. So pay two life into that. And we'll give protection from White so that we can swing through. Should be pretty consistent against a monocolor player. And for anyone who doesn't know, Toxic does stack. So we've got Toxic 1 twice on the Crawling Chorus here. So that is two poison counters we give to our opponent. A Sol Ring from our opponent as well. And Narika into play. Okay, Lightning Greaves is pretty good, so uh, we can shuffle with the Prismatic Vista. I don't think it really matters. And then it's the Injector onto the Avon Sunstriker. And we'll pay White Mana into the Skrelv's ability so that we're not taking too much life. And now this thing has Toxic 1 twice, Flying and Double Strike. And we can swing it straight over the top. So we deal two with the first strike damage and then two more. So taking our opponent to six poison damage. And we'll go through to the second main. Um, yeah, I'm going to risk the Lightning Greaves. Uh, yeah, let's go for the Lightning Greaves. I was going to risk not going for that, but we'll put Lightning Greaves onto the bird so that we can hopefully get our opponent next turn. Our opponent's land tax continuing to trigger, although I don't think it really matters. It's a pearl medallion for our opponent. Eight cards in hand, but I'm sure a few of them are going to be planes, yeah. We'll assume at least three of them are planes because they've had this in since turn one. And there is a Vanquish the Horde going to wipe everything out, so there was nothing we were going to do about that. Uh, we will put our Skrelv in the command zone. Luckily, we've still got the Lightning Greaves available to us to get our commander out again next turn. And the Crawling Chorus is going to leave us with a Toxic Creature, which we can still swing in with. So I think, I haven't actually worked it out yet, but I think we can still get our opponent here, even after the board wipe, so drop a Plains, play out the Skrelv, put Haste onto the Skrelv, and yeah, we might be a mana shy actually, we'll definitely put the 2 life onto this, and we'll give it protection from the colour white, because obviously we're up against them on a white deck. Uh, so then that is Toxic 2. And yeah, why don't we just go for the prosthetic injector as well. So that effectively has toxic three, taking them up to nine. If we had an additional mana, could have gone for proliferate with the glistening sphere, but we can do that next turn. So now let's put lightning greaves on the mite just to play it safe. And that takes them up to nine in fact. Um, let's also play the giver of runes because that might come in handy next turn so that we can get through any blockers that they might have. But it should just be a case of dropping the Glistening Sphere next turn for a Proliferate. And we'll put the 10th Poison Counter onto our opponent. Land Tax continuing to trigger. Tome of Legends for our opponent can draw a card and maybe get into another board wipe. It'll have to be a Wrath of God or something like that. They could cast that for three mana. Don't think they've played their fifth land yet. Okay, and that is a Parallax Haze. But luckily we've got the Lightning Greaves at the moment, as well as protection from white, so... Don't think our opponent's got anything against us here. And there's a Swiftfoot Boots just to push the point across. So we'll just play out the Glistening Sphere. And that is Proliferate on the stack. So we'll just point it at our opponent and say done. And that's good game. So yeah, exactly what we want to be doing with the Skrelv. A uh, pretty one-sided one, so we'll try again. Up against the newer Traxxer this time. And that is a one-lander, no good. Okay, getting into a 4-lander this time, but 
Annoyingly, no creatures to give Toxic over to, so... We're on the draw, we could get lucky, but... We'll try again. Okay, we've got a double striker this time at least, so... I can get rid of... Maybe the board wipe and the Sun Titan. And we draw into an Ink Moth Nexus, so probably play that on turn 2. So that we can uh, get the Summoning Sickness away from that, because this is a Man Land, so... We do need to take Summoning Sickness into account with it. And now it's an Arcane Signet for our opponent, they go down to 3 cards in hand. Another Planes for us, seem to be drawing a lot of lands in this deck during this play session unfortunately. Drop the Ink Moth Nexus and we set up the Fencing Gaze for next turn. Might as well swing in and deal our first point of Toxic Damage to our opponent. Now Narset, Parter of the Veils, largely going to ignore that I imagine. They managed to get themselves into a Sol Ring off the Narset so dropping a basic and playing that out straight away. Okay, it's another land for us, so we will crack the Arid Mesa, try and help our chances of not drawing into lands. Animate the Ink Moth Nexus, and might as well put the mana, as opposed to the life, onto the Fencing Ace. I oh, actually made a mistake there, oh well, um, we'll just give protection from white. And thanks to the Double Strike of course, we are going to have, uh, that is, two poison counters from this. And one poison counter from the Ink Moth, so bumping them up to four. They minus down on the Narset again. And this time hitting a Fatal Push. And they get a Toxic Deluge first. So we're going to be up against a pretty controlly player by the looks of it. The Skrelv, as soon as it comes into play, is going to eat the Fatal Push. Although they might hold on to it for the Ink Moth Nexus. We'll try and hide the Karn's Bastion away from our opponent for as long as possible. Seeing a uh, Flensing Raptor which is just a flyer with Toxic Warm really. So I'll play out the Flensing Raptor here. Two cards left in our opponent's hand and cracking the Arid Mesa at the end of our turn. They can afford their commander here and it is a flyer. So down comes a Traxxer Grand Unifier. And revealing there a lot of cards. There's a Nature's Claim, a Nature's Law, the Sky Shroud Claim, a Land, Utopia Sprawl, Narset's Reversal, Knight's Whisper, Force of Negation and a Ponder, so definitely a typical 1v1 control list. And annoyingly on Magic Online it doesn't actually tell us which cards they've taken here. Um, yeah, so some will be on the bottom and some will be in their hand. We should really know that, but of course it's Magic Online so they don't bother to tell us. There we see the Dusk to Dawn, so... Yeah, can maybe... Encourage them to blow up the Skrelv with that fatal push that we know they have in hand. And then we can wipe the board and maybe go for Dawn at some point. Unfortunately the Atraxa does have Vigilance so even when they swing in at us we still can't get through with the Flensing Raptor going after a Tundra. Uh, that is Ephemerate. So flickering the Atraxa and they're going to get even more card advantage. So uh, it is Lands, a Talisman, the Cyclonic Rift... A Mind Twist, a Grist, Seagate Restoration, and a Leyline Binding. And then we see the Rebound from the Ephemerate, so they're going to get even more stuff here. So this time it's more lands. Uh, Bajukabog, Strip Mine, Oko, Takanuma, Force of Vigor, uh, Pact of Negation, a bunch of uh, free spells that they've got access to. So we are pretty much done here. So the thing with this being a more aggro build, if we see interaction and board wipes and stuff, then we're not going to do a whole lot. Should be interesting to see what our opponent manages to do with a Traxxer though. So seeing the Strip Mine from our opponent taking out the Ink Moth Nexus. Nature's Claim is one that they took previously, so down goes the Skrelv. We won't put it back in the command zone. I uh, would be surprised if they don't do the Mind Twist here. And yep, yeah, there it is, so discarding our hand as well. If we can get into a land, then we can at least go for the Dusk from Dawn to Dusk. And of course we've been drawing into lands all game, and then the one time that we actually need a land on the top, we draw into a Grateful Apparition, so just drop that down here. And now starting to deal commander damage to us, I'm just going to take it here because even if we do cast the Dusk, our opponent has a bunch of counter magic held up, so nothing we can really do against our opponent here. Seeing Oko, Thief of Crowns, and just making a food token with that. We draw in two Priests of Norn, take the damage from the Atraxa again, turning their food token into an Elk with the Oko, 
And I imagine they're just holding up Cyclonic Rift here. <laughs> and then, yeah, can't get into a land even though we need one here. Like I said, the, a land won't even help us at this point. I'm just trying to see something interesting from my opponent because we haven't seen a Traxa Grand Unifier on the channel yet. And there it is. And there we are, down to 21 points of commander damage after the Cyclonic Rift. So, didn't see anything too interesting from a Traxa. It was just um, pretty typical of spreading out the instants and sorceries and enchantments and all the rest of it and just getting into a bunch of control and ramp but if you're going to play in the spiky 1v1 room then that is the most efficient way to build it against ramos dragon engine this time and yeah we can try that one get down the screlves hive on turn two most likely but it is screlve to start things off as usual our opponent just plays a tap land so we're looking pretty safe here for now Get down the planes into the enchantment and we can start making mites every single turn. Then attack our opponent for one point of poison. An amulet of vigor from our opponent. I think we've played against this one on the channel before. The uh, bounce land comes into play tapped and bounces the other tap land. But obviously this untaps itself to the amulet of vigor. Our opponent's still passing over to us though. So we lose a life and get a mite token. And okay, could get down the Silverblade Paladin here, I think. I'd rather go for the Swiftfoot Boots and just have that in play. And we can give Haste and Hexproof to the Might token. Still get two points of poison on our opponent here. And that means that now the Glistening Sphere, once it untaps, is going to give us three mana. So it might be worth playing that out next turn so that we can start making much more mana. Alright, our opponent plays a Glistening Sphere. Does that include himself with this? Activate only if an opponent has three or more poison, so... Yeah, only going to be one mana for our opponent, but it will be three for us. There is a Conqueror's Flail. So I think, seeing as how we're missing land drops, we just have to go for the Glistening Sphere here. Unfortunately, we will not be able to swing in with this Might token. But we can put our opponent up to four on the Proliferate, and then... Yeah, we can go for giving this thing Toxic 1, just in case our opponent removes the Screlve during combat. So pay 2 life into that, and we swing in with the Might for 2 more Poison counters. 1 instance on itself, and 1 instance from the Screlve, so they go up to 6. And our opponent taps down a bunch of mana, gets down a Simic Growth Chamber, which untaps to the Amulet of Vigor and they tap it down again, so got a bunch of mana floating here. And there we see the Ramos Dragon Engine. Okay, so... Uh, Ancient Tomb, that is a decent amount of ramp for us here. I think we have to go for the Path to Exile onto our opponent's Ramos Dragon Engine, just to get it out of the way. Um, they will get into an untapped land here, thanks to the Amulet of Vigor. But we can now go for Triple White on that, so uh, let's go Conqueror's Flail, so that we can guarantee our opponent isn't going to do anything to us. Play the Silverblade Paladin out here as well. Soul Bond with the Phyrexia Might, so this now has Double Strike. So it's 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. We turn in sideways and our opponent can't do anything about it. We would have equipped up the Conqueror's Flail to a creature there as well, so that they definitely couldn't respond to us. And oh, I'm only just noticing now our opponent didn't have any basics in the library, or failed to find at least. But we were just having to play around something like a Fatal Push or a Source to Plowshare, something like that. Anyway, you get the gist of what we want to do with Skrelv, Defector Might. Hopefully you all enjoyed this deck. Bit of a glass cannon, but if things go your way, then it can be pretty fast and quite potent. So have a look through the deck list if you're interested at all. You'll find that in the description, along with a link to Patreon if you want to support the channel monetarily. Huge thank you to those of you who do that already. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.